we got to get into this story. This is the story that I've been wanting to tell for a while. It's been a rough couple of weeks with work and all of that. Uh, but I've been really excited to tell this story because uh, as soon as it happened, I told my mods in the Tank Talk group about it. And I was like, y'all are not going to believe this. This is, this is the coolest thing I've ever experienced. Okay, there's cooler things in life. But when it comes to fish keeping, this is a really cool story. And I think if you're watching this right now, obviously you're a fish keeper. You're going to appreciate this story. So, do you recall back, gosh, it must have been, I th it was a minimum of four months ago. But it may have even been longer ago than that. It was a long, long time ago. I did kind of a tour. It was on one of these live streams. I did a tour of all of my tanks and I showed all of my tanks up close and I showed you my saltwater tank. The uh, Fluval M60 with the clownfish in it and the damsel and the fire shrimp. Remember that? That was a while ago. It was so long ago you have probably forgotten about it. But in that video on that stream, I had to break the news to everybody that one of my clownfish had disappeared completely just vanished I looked everywhere for that fish I looked on the ground I looked under the tank stand I looked up on the bookshelf I mean I looked everywhere and the fish was nowhere to be found so what I assumed because we have three cats in this house I assumed that the fish jumped out of the tank was on the ground and one of the cats got him probably after he was dead. Now, the cats don't come down here all that often, but sometimes you do. You know, Carl visits us from time to time while we're on these live streams. So I just assumed one of the cats got it because cats love fish, right? So it was sad, and I, I, was, I was not very happy about it, but I said, you know what? It is what it is. That's the second time this has happened to me. Shame on me for not covering the tank. That's two clowns that I have lost because of not having the tank covered. The tank doesn't come with a cover, so I just haven't gotten one yet. I mean, you know what? I, I'm a horrible person. What do you what do you what do you want from me? So anyway, wrote it off as a loss and I moved on. I have not added anything to that tank since then. Because it kind of pissed me off and it kind of got me frustrated and I was like, you know, man, I've been taking care of the tank, been maintaining it you know, doing what fish keepers do, but I just haven't been all that enthusiastic about doing anything big with that tank, even though I do have plans. Instead, I was working on my smaller tank, the, the Evo, because, you know, I can do other things in there with corals and things like that. So I've put all of my focus on that and I kind of, I didn't forget about this other one, but I just left it alone, said whatever. Well, if, you've ha if you have a tank like this, that has the built-in sump. We're gonna go over there in a minute. But it has a built-in sump in the back of the tank. I, I will show it to you in a minute. It's in the back, there's three compartments, one for a protein skimmer, one for uh, mechanical media, and then one is the sump where you'll put your, um, your heater and your pump and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's there, it's, on, it's built into the tank. There's a little lid that goes over top of that tank. It's, you know, four inches wide. I'll show it to you in a minute. So I had left that little lid also off uh, <laughs> and didn't realize it. So if you've had a tank like this, or if you have any tank with a sump, you know that if your water gets really, really low to the point where the, the top of your pump is exposed, it'll start spitting air bubbles into the tank. And that's when you really know that you need to top off the tank. Um, and that would happen from time to time with this tank. I was doing water changes about once every other week in this tank. Um, and then other than that, I would top it off with fresh water. That's what you do with saltwater tanks, by the way. So every once in a while, I would be down here and all of a sudden it would start going pssst, pssst, pssst. And I would go, oh man, I let it go again. And I would go over and I would put RO water in there, no salt in it, just fresh RO water fill it back up again, and then move on. So that happened to me last weekend. Uh, it started spitting. I was like, daggone it. You know, and it always happens right when, you know, you're in the middle of doing something. I think I might have been watching Iron Fist or something. I don't know. I don't remember what was going on. But I was really into something, and it started doing that. And I was like, dang it, I can't just leave it alone. 
So let me go over there. I filled it back up again. And then all of a sudden, it started doing it again. And I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on? So I looked over there, and the hose had actually come undone from the pump. And it was just shooting water straight up. It wasn't going anywhere. It was just going straight up. I was like, oh, all right, whatever. So let me go ahead and get in there and let me fix this thing because it's a very small compartment and I can't just put my hands down in there and fix everything. Let me go ahead and take a little bit of the water out and then I can fix this pump and then we'll be good to go. So I drained it down to where the sump itself, which is behind the tank, had about that much water in it. And I started messing around with the pump, trying to get it hooked back up again. Got it hooked up again, put it down in there, turn it on, it wasn't hooked up good enough. So I'm like, all right, damn, I've had enough of this thing. Let me get this thing straight. So I took it all apart, put it all together really good and tight, stuck it back down in there. And as I'm looking down in that sump, what do you think I found? Well, <laughs> If you saw the thumbnail, you already know what I found. Uh, let me see if I can do it. I found her. <laughs> That's right. There she is. I'm saying she because she's the bigger of the two. There she is. That fish was in the sump for months. So let me show you where she, we're just gonna keep calling her she. Let me show you where she was. So on the back of the tank here, you have this built-in sump, right? And this pump is there, or this, this lid is there to prevent exactly what happened. So the fish was down in there. Now this, I can't find myself here, there we are. This hose right here is the one that had become detached. And so the pump is all the way down in there. So it was just shooting water out. So this is what I was messing with. And I finally got up on a ladder and I got in there and I said, what the hell is that moving around down there? And sure enough, I was looking at that. <laughs> so this, is, uh, this was a humongous shock to me. Uh, it was, let me switch this around here. It was, I think, 11.30 at night when this happened. And uh, I'm gonna put this up on a different tripod so that we can sit here at the tank and, and talk uh, and you can see the fish while we're talking. But uh, I think it was like 11.30 at night and Lisa was already in bed. And I said, you have to come down here. I texted her because I wasn't gonna go all the way upstairs. It's two flights up, are you kidding me? So I texted her. I said, you have to come down here right now. It's important, you're gonna be glad that you did. And so she did, and I showed her, and she was just as blown away as I was. Now, I really don't know, I'm trying to get this thing straight here for you, so I'm not sitting here crooked. I don't know what the fish was eating the whole time that she was back there. And I'm telling you folks, if you look way back, it, it had to have been a minimum of four months. You can see the fish. She's perfectly healthy. Her belly is not sunken in. It's not like she's starving. She's grown. She's always been bigger than the Picasso. Isn't that what it's called? Picasso clown? Uh, always been about twice the size of that one and still is. So obviously this fish continued growing Obviously, the fish was eating something while she was back there. I guess food just found its way through somehow. I don't know. I mean, the input's over here, and it goes through the skimmer. It goes through mechanical filtration, which you may have seen, and then it gets to the sump. So I don't know how much food was getting in there, but obviously it was enough to keep her alive and keep her growing and keep her happy. And I found her, and now... Here we are. So I, I was so excited about this. I, I mean, I was really sad when that fish died because it was my fault, because I didn't have a lid on the tank. And it had already happened to me 
already. You know, I mean, it had happened several months earlier than that. The first two fish that I bought for this tank, one of them jumped out, and I was devastated by that. And Lisa bought me that one uh, as a as a way of making me feel better. And so I had these two, and I love them. I love clowns. Come on, who doesn't love clowns? They're my two little babies. And I was devastated that that one fish jumped out and, and died and was in one of my cat's bellies. So to find that fish was amazing to me. Uh, I have had one similar case like that happen. Uh, I, I don't know if I've ever told this story either, but I had uh, back in a, the house that I lived in before Lisa and I even lived together, I had a tank that I was uh, breeding peacocks in. It was a 29 gallon tank. And uh, no, it was a 55 gallon tank, I'm sorry. And uh, there, the, the fish were breeding, they were OB peacocks, and they were just breeding. I wasn't trying to be a fish breeder, but they were just breeding. And I loved it, it was wonderful. Um, but I, I, you know, I would raise, I would have the fry in there, the, the female would spit the fry, and then I would take the fry out and put them into a, a grow out tank or a, a 10 gallon fry tank. But I guess one of them stayed in there for a long time. I went to do maintenance on my canister filter. I think I had a Rena canister filter on that one. Um, and I took the, the canister filter apart and I was cleaning it out and doing everything that I do. And there was a fish in that canister that was about an inch and a half long, all blotched up like a peacock, but very, like an OB peacock, but very pale because this fish had never seen light. It was in that filter the whole time and that's when I made the wise decision of not allowing the females to spit in there anymore because the fry were so small that they could get into the filter intake and end up in the filter who knows how many fish got ground up in the impeller of that canister filter but that was really really cool to find that fish and I actually had that fish for a very very long time that fish died it was like seven years old when it died and it was in my 150 gallon tank when it crashed a couple of years ago if you recall that so i mean that's the other time that this has happened to me but that one i had no idea that that fish was there i wasn't expecting it i was just cleaning out the canister and there it was this one i had no idea it was there but i knew a fish was missing and to find her in there was amazing now for you all that are late the very condensed version of the story this clownfish see my uh can you see my uh fire shrimp is that dude a badass or what let me show you a close up i'm sorry to use the language but i can't use a word other than badass to describe that dude right there Woo! come on out i am a sucker for this shrimp he's very very skittish though as soon as he sees me he retreats i say he i don't know i assume being that uh being that dark red and just that bold i just assume it's a dude you know 